Днес сме благословени да представим една от тези проникновени лекции, озаглавена Соранга Масутра. Четирите ясни и непроменими инструкции за чистота, заключение и установяване на място за пробуждане, част 7 от 8 в Между учителя и учениците, изнесена на английски на 24 декември 2018 година. My previous master knows you, Master. Who? Uh, my, my previous master, which we, whom we discussed with you, Brahmarshi Patriji, Pyramid Spiritual Society. He is a Buddha's meditation master. Oh. He, he knows, and I still meet him whenever he comes to USA. He, he stays in my house. He knows me? Uh, you know him, he knows you. Oh. So you have seen his picture and you told oh. him who he was. And uh-huh. uh, So last time when I met him and he said, myself and my wife, these, are, these two are... Uh, Supreme Master Ching Hai's favorites, oh. and and uh, he actually asked me to invite you to India. Uh, uh, and actually, they d- uh, uh, every year uh, from December 21st to December 31st, every year they do a group meditation with 100,000 people. Oh. So they, they construct pyramids at the scale of 5,000 to 6,000 people can sit inside. He actually asked me to invite you oh. to India. So every every three months, so he we hear they actually publish uh, Supreme Master Ching Hai's vegan diet and all those things in their magazines. Oh yeah! Right. <laughs> wow! Thank him a lot and tell him that uh, I really really appreciate his invitation. It's official now, she said. That right. Official now, Indian goes vegan. Okay, right. all right. Please tell your master that uh, I pay respect and thank, I, I will, thank th- him. Thank you, yes, master. Yes. Okay, uh, all right. There are so many master. It's, it's easier for you to choose now. They actually believers of the cosmic energy, which is which is produced through pyramid, like Giza pyramid. So all the disciples, most of them, whoever has little bit money, they buy, they build a small pyramid. Because the cosmic energy is, is built at 45 degrees, yes. uh, th- that's the reason even Giza pyramid is is uh, is giving energy to the earth. Yes, yes, yes. That's why they built the pyramid before. I have told in one of my lectures that there's a meditation place. Right. People just thinking, they don't know what, but I say... This. No, it, if, if you sit inside a pyramid and do meditation, you achieve uh, samadhi in more three, concentration. Uh, quickly. Uh, just physically speaking, it's more protective. Right, yes. yes. And whatever negative power, it will disperse out, right. you know, in this uh, shape, yes. And... Uh, I told a long time ago, I don't know if it's recorded or not, that because some people ask me, what's the pyramid is for? Is it the tomb or something? I said, no, no, in the old time, people built it just to meditate. It's a meditation place. Now it proved it. All right, okay. So do what you can to help yourself. Hmm? Hmm. But I don't think that the London people can build pyramid into their literal... Apartment is very expensive in London, for example, you know, Paris, you know. It's, it's, it's enough to put furniture inside and you zigzag your way through it. <laughs> yeah, we're more worried about the soul level, not, not the body level. That's why you are here for us, Master. All right, thank good, you. good. Uh, thank you for your valuable information. Thank you, Master. That just confirmed what I said before. The pyramid is people built it for meditation. Everybody thinks it's a tomb or what is it inside. Nobody even knows up to now what for. For meditation purpose, yeah? Number one is very good concentration inside, energy, okay? Also the cosmic energy can help you, okay? It's a one-pointed like that, yeah? Okay, and then number two is that in the desert it's so hot. The pyramid is very thick. You know, the wall diameter, very thick, and it's so cool inside, as if you stay in a normal... The, the basic reason pyramids were constructed is Egyptians believe that the person who dies, they will be, be reborn again. That's why they use it to mummify the body and put it inside the pyramid. The body will be born again? Yeah, they, they actually wrap it in a chemical cloth yeah, 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 and put yeah, it Yeah, yeah, but that pyramid. is just for the... Yeah, the, their belief is the person will, be, will take rebirth and use the same body. They use pyramids for that purpose. No, that's what people suspect. But it's just for meditation before. 
okay? And whatever, they wrap them in silk or in a mummy uh, kind of uh, substance, it's just it's their tradition, just to keep it, to preserve the body. Just like we nowadays, we want to keep the body in a coffin and bury it in some special place and build a little memorial, uh, just so that we remember, because we all want to be like eternally uh, in the in in life, so they do anything they can just to preserve that concept. Yes. I wanted to ask a question about what you were reading before, if mm. that's okay. About when the Buddha was talking about how to get enlightenment without a master, the mm. cow and the mm. poop and the yes. no sleep. Did he mean? I wondered if he meant to say that, like literally, as in doing these things will actually, or did he mean it more like a parable, no, as no, far no. as like the impossibility of of finding enlightenment without a master. Maybe so also, yeah? But he really mean it. He really tell all it graphically, okay? But also, it's possible only because his descendants, disciple is still, is still there. It's the final age of his Dharma teaching. Not now, not now anymore. Not after 2,700 years of his Nirvana. At that time, he, Buddha just passed away, final end in age about 500 years after he passed away. That's in other sutra he say that. Yes. For him, for his teaching lineage, end at 300, 500 years after. But not now anymore. Okay? Even if you want to do it, it might not work. You don't find these pure monks and nuns who are still having this blood lineage in them anymore to transmit it to you, however little or diluted <laughs> is still there. After the Master dies, 300 or 500 years maximum, no more. That's why every Sutra emphasized living Master. Otherwise, uh, the Buddha was there and he tell people, okay, you just go and do that, no need me, no need the Buddha, okay? No, they all come and study with the Buddha. And he say it's a very rare you can find the Buddha yeah, and the teaching when he's still alive. This is for his descendants' disciple, who still have pure, if they're pure in the precepts, and they had already the lineage is still going, not as strong as when the Buddha alive, because they, they transmitted like from the first uh, successor, yeah, from the Buddha, and then to the second successor of that successor, and the third successor of the successor, and so on and so forth. Just like after the tenth guru of the Sikh passed away, well, before that, he said, no more, no more gurus of the Sikh. Only study the scripture, because at that time, that's the best he can offer to his disciples because he knows the nine master has gone. He's the last one. And there's no more bloodline, uh, no more spiritual bloodline to pass on to the next uh, generation. So he said, just study the scripture. It's better than nothing. In the scripture, at least it's mentioned nam, mentioned precept, mentioned purity, mentioned God, devotion. The people who can follow that and attain some level of understanding of Godhood, and then maybe they're lucky they find living master, okay? Yeah, otherwise the guru cannot cheat people and say, okay, after I die, uh, my wife, my son, my, his son die anyway in the battle. Because at that time, the, the, the king of that country and the people who believe in the king's uh, religion at that time, uh, chasing the master and, and, and harass them no end, and, you know, in the battle, his sons also die. So even in, in that lineage, it's supposed to be that his uh, family member inherit the mantle. But to him, he has no more sons anyway. And he knows there's no more, no more uh, gurus in that lineage to uphold the continued bloodline of the spiritual practice. So he says, study Granth Sahib uh, scripture. At least these are the teaching of the gurus, the true gurus, ten of them. Continue, at least there are still blessings in there. But that is for his immediate disciples and descendants. Later on, 
probably is all diluted already, but still helpful. Like people believe in the Buddha, they know they should not kill, they should not steal, at least something to keep them afloat and not go to hell, not to descend into lower level and suffering. Okay? If they keep the precept as the Buddha taught, even now, if they don't kill, they don't steal, they don't lie, huh? I mean, normal people, uh, even if they eat a little meat, but without knowing the vegan stuff, without having hatred or, or killing instinct in their heart, keep the five precepts. They still can be reborn as human, you know, a decent human, have a comfortable life. And if they continue the five precepts like that, they will be reborn again as human, decent life, comfortable. So it helps to study the scriptures, and it helps to learn you know, from the Bible that you have to be good, you have to, you know, fear God and pray to Jesus, etc. It helps them, okay? That's why the ten guru of the Sikh tell them, study Grand Sahib. The Grand Sahib is your guru. What else can he say when he knows there's no more lineage left? But that doesn't mean he stopped there. It could be that one of his disciples or descendants of the disciple continue the studying together a, a little while longer, and it could be that one of the master descend into that lineage afterward, after the ten guru passed away. And then he became a master, and then continued the lineage in elsewhere, not in his family lineage. You got that? Because it's like this. In the Sikh system, from the first guru to the Tenth, it ends there. Why is that? Because one of uh, the family member of the master have a very selfish wish. One of the earlier Sikh master has a daughter. Yeah, okay. The Sikh master they married. Okay, but they don't indulge in you know physical sensation the way normal people do. They just uh, sometimes uh, have a corporal contact so that they can have children. Okay. It's just tradition to have children. <laughs> so they have two or three children, maybe like that. Uh, once a year or twice a year to be together with wife, nothing more. Now, uh, one of the master has a daughter, okay? She was sitting with him. Even if he's a, she's a daughter of a master, she always had to sit lower than the master. Even a wife or the mother of the master always sit lower than, than the guru, all the time, in India like that. That you're not allowed to sit. It's just tradition. Out of respect, you don't sit the same high as the master, that's all. Okay, so this daughter, she sat on the ground. And the master of the Sikh at that time, earlier master, yeah? Not the tenth, but before that. And then she, he sat on his uh, bed to meditate. Yes, and the daughter was sitting at his feet on the ground. And uh, somehow the bed was old and one of the legs fell off, okay? So she worried the master would be awakened out of Samari. She used her hand to hold it all night long. But the nails are pinched into her hand, bleeding, but she still hold it. Such a devotion, okay? So in the morning, the master awakes from samadhi, come back to the physical life body, and then realize what the daughter has done for him. He felt very, very touched, you know, not just as a master, but as a father as well. Such a filial daughter, of course, who wouldn't like huh? love? So he said, oh, okay, whatever you wish, I will grant it to you. Normally, master don't say that to anyone because they they just let the disciple develop according to their understanding and karma. The master don't favor any disciple and say, okay, I will grant you wish because I like you, <laughs> because you are my daughter, you are my wife, you are my son. No, 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 no. Or you are my favorite disciple, or you give me one million dollar nada. The master treat everyone equally. But because he was so touched, he came out of a pure, pure meditation samadhi all night long. So his mind is still so pure. He also forget the rule, yeah? And he was touched by his daughter's devotion, sit all night with the nail in her, deep in her hand and bleeding, just to keep him in samadhi. 
because she knows the master meditate is very important for the disciples, for the world. So she sacrificed, sit like that instead of the leg of the bed. And then the master just saw that and so very touched. He said, okay, whatever wish you have, I will grant it. Master really never says such thing, okay? But it's just a situation like that. And then the daughter said, I have only one wish. That's the master lineage, stay in the family. Oh, man, that is very selfish. You cannot do that. The master lineage should be passed on. The master mantle should be passed on to whoever worthy and enlightened and selflessly devoted to humankind, you know, for all beings, not because a family member. But the master already promised, so he has to hold it, even though he was aghast as her request, because he can foresee that this selfish wish will bring bloodshed into the Sikhism. At that time, there was no Sikhism or thirst, not because the master at that time or the first Guru Nanak never proclaimed any Sikhism, no nothing. He just go barefoot, go from one place to another, teaching people, whoever can have affinity with him or have wisdom to, to learn. Okay? He never uh, to, to want to make Sikhism or anything just so people about him. No, no, no. Just, just happen, okay, afterward. Because the king of that country at that time and his go and seek to destroy other religion and other preachers like Guru Nanak and his later successor. That's why we had trouble with, at that time. So they had to have some kind of defense uh, kind of system for the disciple, and they called him to seek and would defend the weak, you know, the brothers and sisters. And uh, therefore, at that time, to recognize each other as Sikh, in separation to others, so that they can recognize each other when they see each other, because they have to practice in secret. Okay? Also, the disciples scatter everywhere, so they have to have some symbols to recognize. They have symbols, like they have a, a bracelet, and you have your long hair have to wrap up in, in the cloth, yeah? and your hair have to have a comb, and inside you have a short... Uh, what else I forgot? Uh, five things. 5K. 5K? Yeah, 5K. Everything starts with K letters, so uh, it's called 5K. Everything go with K, okay. A comb, a bracelet, and... A knife. Huh? A knife, or, or a dagger, a dagger. And the underwear short, you know, a short. Like this, so that you... Female and male. Female and male, same. So that you can identify, you know. And also be ready, ready to, to go... You ready know, to go to defend to others. Defend. Yeah, 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 that's what it is, okay? Otherwise, normally the disciples don't ever need any yeah. knife or anything. But at that time, they're harassing them relentlessly. They want to destroy the master and the Sikh follower at that time. So they have to just defend themselves, you know, and run. Wow. And nowadays, there remain symbol, symbol you can see him, okay? You see, so even uh, the, the master, master daughter and disciple, and still that ignorant to wish like that, to wish that the master mantle always remain in the family. Family member not necessarily enlightened or worthy to be a master. <laughs> she is a good example for that, no? Otherwise, she would never ever think of even keep the mantle of mastership in her family. You see that? But the master already promised, so it goes like that. So from then on, their family member inherit the mantle of the Sikhism, as far as if they have son, okay? A daughter, no. I think not at that time, no. So because of that, the Sikhism, from then on up to the tent, master, always there's a bloody, bloody battlefield. Always a lot of war and killing and, you know, oppressing from the government, whatever government at that time. The master knew it, but, you know, a master promised you can't, you can't go backward. You can't go back on that. Whew. Well, I don't have a daughter per se to to hold my bed. I have a sofa, it's safer. <laughs>
The sofa is always safe. Even if it fell down, it don't fall too far. No. Anyway, good, good. That's why I don't have any daughter, son, or whatever sit next to me. I, I avoid that in case. <laughs> but I also don't think uh, we should have any success. Up to now, not yet. But who knows in the future, maybe. If you have one, I will tell you, okay? On record video. <laughs> Long years ago, I thought maybe there's one. But then later, because the world changed, the karma changed so much, I don't think it's possible to anyone to handle the matter, you know, up to now. So I have to continue. Mm. Okay then, okay then. Any more? You want any more stuff? Yeah. All right. I think i almost done with that and, uh, and this subject about the precepts. <laughs> 